What I'm going to address today is mental wellness. And um, as I was thinking of this presentation, there's, of course, a lot of things, a lot of topics, a lot of skills, a lot of um, what could I, I could cover. But what I did was really narrowed in on what are the things that you could apply today. Um, what are some of the things that have actually worked the best for all of my clients that have been from different backgrounds, um, different professions um, over the years? Oop. So a little bit more about me, you know, who am I and why do I get to talk about mental wellness? Um, Here's some of my credentials um, where I graduated from uh, college. Um, my so my background is actually as a dancer, and that really informs my foundation in coming into this work from a bottom-up approach, focusing on the body. And when I talk about the body, it also includes the mind. I think we, unfortunately, nowadays think of the, the mind and body as separate, and they're not. They're so intertwined, so interconnected, and we have to address both simultaneously. They're not separate. So my, my bat movement and dance background really informs my work as a mental health counselor, which led me into becoming a dance movement therapist and counselor. I've been in practice since 2013, and I've had the great experience of working in different settings, and I'm currently in a private practice setting. Um, a couple of fun facts about me I always like to share is that I'm still professionally dancing to this day, and that I'm really obsessed with hockey, really obsessed. Um, a little bit about me. So today, these are some of the objectives that I want to hit um, in our time together. Um, and this is the outline of how I want to address those things. So I want you to take a moment and rate your stress level right now. What is it? Zero to 10. You're coming in from the beginning of your day. You're coming in to listen to me talk at you, which I don't want to do. I want this to be engaging, interactive. So if at any point you have any questions or remarks, um, please share, let me know. Um, so just, I want you to hold on to that. Where's your stress level right now? So Jim uh, was very um, kind to give me some of the inside look of being in real estate and the specific stressors that come with it. And here they are outlined, unpredictable, unpredictable income, high competition, client expectations, long hours, isolation, and a lot of pressure to perform. So do any or all of these apply to you? Have you experienced any and all of these? And if you have, if you would just put a yes in the in the chat or if you want to give a thumbs up or a head nod you know to acknowledge and a lot of yeses yep 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 so take notice of that so that stress can have an impact, not just on our bodies, but it can have an impact on the way that we're able to focus on our work. It can um, impact the way that we are communicating and spending time with our families. And then of course, it comes down to the physical and mental health and how that stress over time can lead to some more severe symptoms. And here are those symptoms. I outlined the short-term effect, uh, effects of stress and the long-term effects of that stress. And what's interesting to me is if you notice this, uh, this short-term effects of stress, that list is pretty short compared to the long-term. And I think that oftentimes people fall into the trap that the short-term effects, short-term of stress, they think they can handle it. Oh, they, you know, it's okay. I can, I, you know, I can just, you know, go on. The thing is, though, is that that's a thought trap within itself, is that this is not sustainable. Those things are not sustainable long term. And long term, your body will tell you in a very clear way that it's time to stop, slow down. It's not okay. And it, of course, can lead to um, worse health outcomes in the long run.
So the point here is if you notice all those yeses as we were talking about the stresses of the job or talking about the outcome, how stress impacts our lives, the point is, if you took a look around, if you notice that list, you re I want you to realize that you're not alone. You're not the only one that suffers in those with those issues. And that's a, that's another thought trap that I think a lot of people fall into is thinking that they're the only ones that are that's suffering, or they have to they have to suffer uh, on their own. That they have to carry the burden on their own. And unfortunately, this is this is not the truth. We are all in it together. We all can help each other. And it's really important for people to reach out when it gets hard, connect with supports, and make sure to get the help and support that they need because we all can't do it by ourselves. And that's okay. That's part of being human is having human connection and having a community around us at all times. CIBA in itself is a little community and you all I'm sure could reach out to each other for that support and you have community sense of community in your family with your friends so you, everyone has these clusters of communities around us so again no one is ever ever alone so when it comes to stress it's about managing the stress before it starts to manage you and I always like to go back to basics and keep it simple. Um, again, when I was thinking about this presentation, I could have, you know, we could have co covered a lot of different topics, time management, could have talked about boundaries, um, could have talked about a number of other things. But I think it's always good to start and always go back to basics um, in order to take care of the body so that the body can keep functioning and doing the work that, it, that you want to do especially in this field. So in all, all my time of working with clients, it, these are what I've boiled, this is what it's boiled down to as the basics. Sleep, nutrition, water, connection, and movement. These are the basics. These are the essentials in order to, for us to be healthy individuals. And these are like the bare minimums. So like, you know, I think a lot, I hear a lot of people talk, oh, I don't have the time or, oh, you know, it's just, it's hard to do it. Well, here are the simple, most basic ways to meet your own needs, to be able to um, keep that, that overall wellness. Um, and these all inter interconnect with each other. They all influence each other. But I do want to point out that sleep is at the top and sleep is at the top for a number of reasons. It is actually our number one basic need. Most people put it at the bottom of the list when it really should be at the top. Because if you're not sleeping well, everything else unfortunately falls apart. Your, your, the way your water body processes water is not as, a, as effective and efficient. The way your body processes nutrition is not as effective. Even when you're sleep deprived, you're actually more likely to be hungry. Um, so you're taking in more calories for energy, but that is not getting burned. And so there's that, that, tr that, uh, often a bad habit that starts and it's not even necessarily a bad habit is your body is trying to maintain a level of energy by consuming food that it doesn't really need, but because of the chemical imbalances, the sleep deprivation can lead to that. Um, connection, the way that you connect with others um, can be directly impacted by sleep. Um, your decision making, your emotion regulation, everything um, is then affecting the sleep and then how you're able to clearly communicate with those around you um, and prioritizing, making sure to check in with yourself and, and others can go down the list as well. And then if you're tired, if you're sleep deprived, people don't move as much and our bodies are built to move. We are not meant to be stationary beings, which is become more of the common thing these days. So movement is vital for our bodies to get our blood pumping, to get that blood that has oxygen to be flowing through our bodies. So again, all these things go back to sleep and its importance. And even one poor night of sleep can lead to 30% increase in anxiety symptoms. So if that's happening after one night, and if that's happening over a longer period of time, 
that's just compounding, compounding, compounding the body under you know, levels of stress, which can also lead to clinical levels of depression, anxiety, and oftentimes sleep dep deprivation can lead to su suicidal ideation and suicidal completion. So these are my no-brainers, my no excuses for getting the bare minimums of your five basics of wellness. So when pre preparing this presentation, along with those five basics, I wanted to make sure that you had some things that you could apply today that you can do within five minutes, that you can do whether you're sitting, whether you're standing, but these are go these are ways that are going to help you to calm down in your body. Um, and so I invite you to try them out. Um, again, this is the definitely the more engaging part of the presentation. Um, you may even find them silly and that's okay. Um, laughter is a stress management um, skill within itself. Um, so I invite you to try them these out. These have been some of my go-to's that I have taught my clients um, that have actually gotten the best results in helping them to calm down. So. Trying to check in with my notes. So here's the first one. This one is called the chest press. And um, this one, one of the basics is taking a deep breath. And if we, it seems like it's a common thing in which, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, if these things are, um, you know, I try not to assume that everybody knows what I know. Um, but I hoped, I hope that a lot of people know about the benefits of taking a deep breath and why it's so beneficial. Um, if not, biologically, what's happening in the body is that when you take a deep breath, your lungs are expanding and hugging your heart. And that is slowing down your heart, which more times than not, if your heart is beating in a state of stress, that's gonna influence your thinking. You're gonna move faster instead of slowing down and taking that deep breath. So if you want to keep your camera on, great. If you wanna go ahead and turn it off so nobody, you know, you're not feel like you're being watched, that's okay too, um, to throw out all of these. So this one, what you're going to do is you're going to take the palm of your hand and you're going to place it about two inches below your collarbone where your clavicle meets. So you're going to put it there. You're going to take a deep breath in. And then as you exhale slowly, you're going to press with about 20% of your strength into that spot into the chest. We're going to do that all together five times. Do it three more times. Two more times. And one more time, all together. So another reason why that particular one is effective beyond just the deep breathing is that spot in your chest is a polyvagal um, uh, touch. If you're familiar with polyvagal theory, it's the actual like a polyvagal pressure pressure point. Um, so that's another another talk. But it's you know the polyvagal nerve connects to the amygdala, which is the alarm bell in your in your head. So this is one of those like direct ways to calm down that alarm bell, to calm yourself down. And this adds an extra layer beyond just the deep breathing in order to do that. And this is like my number one go-to. Everyone, everyone finds this one very beneficial. Great. Second one is called the heel drops. And this is actually taken from my dancer background. Um, whenever I would be doing turns on the floor or you know, turns in any way, 
after a while, you can get really dizzy. So this is one way that actually helps your um, uh, central nervous system to to ground and to to um, to you know, like go go downward instead of continuing that spinning that spiral. This downward motion helps to uh, to ground the central nervous system. So you can do this standing or sitting, and if you will, just make sure your feet are flat on the floor. And you're going to lift your heels up just a little bit off the floor, and then you're just going to let your body drop. And we're going to do this 10 times together. And you can, if you're not able to, for whatever reason, do it standing or sitting, you can do it with your shoulders, which still gives that similar impact. All right. So we're going to do it all together for 10 times and up and down, up and down, up and drop, down, up and down. This is the fifth time, sixth time, seventh time, eighth time, ninth time, and tenth time. Right. So you learned a little dancer move today. So hopefully that helps you. <laughs> all right. And here is another one. This is the third one I wanted to share with you all. This is Shake It Out. Um, and this is, you can do this either standing or sitting, of course, again, and I want you to choose a body part or you can use your whole body. What's beneficial about this is if it's using a, like a vibration of your body in order to shake out physical tension and stress, because usually stress equals tension. There's some form of tension, whether it's mentally, whether it's physically. So this is one of, one of those ways to shake out that tension. Um, if, and if any of you have ever seen um, uh, a deer out in the wild, if it's been chased, something it does after it's been chased and it gets to a safe place, it does something called discharging. So it literally shakes itself back to a its neutral state and to, back to homeostasis. So we're borrowing that from, you know, back from nature, from, from a deer of shaking out that tension and tightness that we can sometimes start to build up. Okay. So I want you to pick your either your whole body or you can pick one one body part. I always like to shake my hands. Um, so if that's what you would like to do with me, do it. We're going to do it for 10 seconds. OK, so we're going to do it in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So with this one and all the other ones, like I said before, even if you think that they're silly, you can do them in private. Because you can do them let for less than five minutes. You can do this, you know, we all have to take bathroom breaks. So if you need to go to the bathroom and shake it out before um, you go to your next meeting, your next presentation, whatever it may be, this is one a very quick way to get yourself to hopefully be a little bit more calm. So this one is called gaze spotting. And this is actually based in something called called brain spotting. Um, this is something that I'm actually trained in, um, and it is, um, in a very brief way, uh, it's using the eyes as the way to um, calm down the nervous system, because uh, the hypothesis of it is where you look affects how you feel. So what we're borrowing from brain spotting is this gaze spotting, which is something very simple, some, something very discreet. No one even has to know that you're doing it. Um, <laughs> So what I want you to do is I want you to take a moment and close your eyes or either have a soft gaze down to the floor so that you can really tune into your brain and what's happening with your brain. If you could visualize what it looks like, if you could visualize where there's maybe some spots where it's more active and tense or maybe where it's more calm. But I want you to focus in on one of those spots in your brain. Maybe focus on the spot where it is, it's really active right now. You're really noticing it. And then what I want you to do is open up your eyes and glance around the room. And I want you to look and see if there's a spot of interest, something or something that whenever you look at it, you can feel that it directly connects to that spot that you felt was active. Or it can be just a spot that you find very interesting. But what I want you to do, and we'll just do it maybe for a few minutes, I want you to look at that spot. You know how you've ever, you've ever dazed out 
and, you know, just kind of found yourself staring at something for a little while. Well, actually, that is your brain trying to process through something. That's your brain trying to take a moment. So I'm giving you this moment to just tune into that, calm down, and just see what comes up. So just take another minute looking at that spot that's connected to that active part of your brain. Just take a break. And then when you feel like you've brought that to a close, you can close your eyes and bring yourself back to the presentation. So that's a very simple way that no matter where you are, taking a mental break from what you're doing, where you're at. And it's also a really great way to check in with yourself, kind of going back to those five basics of wellness, that connection to self, checking in with yourself. That is one simple way. It's like, how's, how, what's my brain doing? How can, you know, maybe I need to give it a break and then being able to do that and doing it just for a few minutes throughout the day. So this is one of my favorite ones. This is the three movement sequence. And so this is a way, it can be used in a number of ways, but I thought it would be helpful for you guys to use it in uh, focusing on past, present, and future. Because um, sometimes people get very stuck in feeling like right now is forever, or re not realizing how far that they've come along, whether that's just how much they've accomplished in a day or how much they've accomplished in a week or a month. Sometimes people lose track of that. So this is one of those ways to be able to recognize like, wait a minute, I, I've accomplished a lot or this is, I'm excited about where I'm going. So very um, openly in this way, you know, not without thinking about it. Cause again, we're trying to be more actually in your body than your brain and you're uh, in this moment so create a gesture of where you came from the past so usually you know that can be at the background so that's my gesture for the past and it's usually you know what's behind us what we've come from so for you create a gesture whatever that may be or if you want to try mine on that's okay too now create a gesture of now of the present and if you want to, you can take mine. So where you're at right now in this moment. And then create a gesture of where you want to go, which is more future focused. What are you working towards? What are you looking forward to? What are you excited about? Because sometimes we forget about that. What this is all about. Now, putting them all together. Past, present future. Do it all again. Past, present, future. And you can, and we'll do it one more time. I really feel that. So past, present, and future. And that can be as small as of a gesture as you want it to be. Like you can be like itty bitty, just your hands, just your head moving back, middle, forward. Or it can be a big movement. You can use your whole body, but it's about embodying the experience, embodying like, whoa, you came from a lot this morning. Wow, you're really focused on right now in this moment for you all at this presentation. I hope that you're fully engaged and present still. And then where are you going to go? What the rest of the day holds that hopefully you're looking forward to that you're excited about. And this is in a very embodied way to feel it because actually a lot of people don't realize that our emotions really come from our body. Again, that bottom up approach. So we are, our bodies have reaction, have senses to something, whether that's what's going on around us or something's going on inside. And then it's our brain that then interprets what it is, what it names the emotion or makes sense of the emotion. So that's why you know it's really important to always go back to the body. What am I feeling in my body? Is that what I'm feeling? Or, you know, so that you're really clear on where you're at and what you need to do with that. If you're hungry, maybe you need to go eat something. If you're feeling tense, go work it out, stretch it out in some way. Um, usually our bodies are so intelligent and sometimes we don't pay attention and listen to what they have to say. 
So now rate your stress level, zero to 10. What is it now? I really hope that it's less <laughs> than what it was before um, at the beginning of the presentation. Well, I'm seeing, I'm finally able to bring up the chat. I'm seeing some lower numbers. Okay, nice. Yeah. And we did that all in what? Just a few minutes. That wasn't very long. So just imagine if you did one or multiple of these throughout your day, how much more calm that you would be during your day, especially b before, during, or after you're facing a stressful situation, a stressful event. Like, it's always important to take those breaks. So I wanted to make sure everyone is aware of the signs of when it is probably time to seek out help. Um, I think at any, at least at one point or another, most people need mental health care, at, and that could be short-term or long-term. What I usually tell people in what is short-term care for mental health or therapy is anywhere from six months to two years. Long-term care could be two years or more. But these are some of those telltale signs to pay attention to of when you need to start probably looking for mental health care, whether that's a therapist, a social worker, psychiatrist, psychologist, um, there are different forms of, of help out there. And those actual steps to getting the mental health support are here. Um, you know, making sure you're clear about what you need. And if you, and I will say, if you aren't clear, if it is, you know, um, if it is un completely unclear, that is okay too. Maybe the therapist can help you to be a little bit more in tune with that or whoever it is that you do reach out for help. Um, here, the research options, these are a number of ways that you can seek out a mental health uh, provider. And then usually it's pretty easy to make sure you just schedule an appointment and then being ready before that appointment. Here are some resources. I will say there are, the beauty of the internet these days is that there are so many resources out there, um, you know, an innumerable amount. Um, so here are just a few. So NAMI is actually a national, it's the National Alliance of Mental Health, but I included the one for South Carolina. Um, that's where I, I'm based. Um, so I'm sure you guys, some, some of you are not in South Carolina, but NAMI is still, it is, they have local chapters for by state and by um, counties. Um, so, but this is what I just want to make sure to put here because it does have local and national resources on this page. Then there's the mental health first aid page of resources and the mental health first aid website is also a great resource within itself. And then um, Jim was so generous in giving me a beautiful list of many resources. So what I did was I turned it into a Google sheet form um, and I added the, the two that I have on this page at the top. And I want you guys to add and share the, this. So it's open for you to add ones that you found helpful. And then if you want to um, take a copy for yourself or give out the copy, um, that is great too. So like I said, there's just so many resources out there. And I know it, it's usually about helping people find the one that matches them. Um, so I hope that you find that helpful. So of all the things to take away from today, I want to make sure that everyone understands the importance of self-care. I cannot tell you how many times I've heard people say, I, don't, I just don't want to be a burden. I don't want, I don't like to be a burden. And that to me is the most contradictory thing that people can say, because going back to that thought trap of uh, people thinking that they can sustain short-term stress, is, un, you know, is unfortunate because that short-term stress is gonna catch up eventually, especially if someone just continues to take on and take on and not take care of themselves in the process. Because I think that people don't understand what, what they do is they're setting themselves up for, um, for failure in a way and not failure in the traditional sense, but tra failure in the way that they can't get up after they've fallen and that Unfortunately, some, that means that loved ones, the very loved ones that you're trying to avoid putting the burden on are going to have to step in to take care of you prematurely, which is not fair to anyone involved. Everyone, I believe, has should have the right to live their life as fully as possible, but I don't like 
it's not great when people sabotage that in, in a way by not taking care of themselves first. So of all the things to take away from today, this is what I hope that you take. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap that up. I hope that this has been helpful and beneficial to you all. And I thank you so much for having me. Thank you.